Hello, in this video we're going to look at removing magic numbers and just all round hard coded values. So a quick overview of what a magic number and a hard coded value is, they're essentially the same thing. So if I go to frog CPP for example, we've got minus 80 as the left movement amount and 80 for the right, minus 80 for the up and 80 for the down. All of this is moving 80 in one direction. Minus just means it's moving in the opposite direction to the one with a positive in the same axis, but it's still moving the exact same amount. So this is actually a magic number, because it's just a number that we've plopped here. And this is also a hard-coded value as well. And another, actually, going back to magic numbers, another thing with magic numbers is, is something like you might just put a number there and it's just for testing and it might change it later. And this is a value that could be changed later. Also, it's just hard coded. So if I wanted to change this to 120, if I wanted, I mean, the amount that it moves in every axis, I'd have to do this. And again, this doesn't seem too bad, but imagine when you have a, let's say, a single value that's using 20, 30 plus different locations in your code, and it's not all together like so, and you're literally experimenting with values, so you want to tweak it a bit, test it, tweak it a bit, test it, tweak it a bit, test it. Imagine trying to change 30 plus different locations of code with a different value, and trying to keep track of that in your head is just going to be insane. Again, chances are they won't just be bunched up like this. So what we're going to use is a definitions file, which will contain our sort of values almost like the properties of our game and we'll be using them so let's create a new file and this isn't going to be a class this is just a header file so header file and i'm going to call this the general standard for this is definitions and just all uppercase that's just the general standard by default it's named it as h i'm going to name it as hpp get rid of the contents and put hash pragma once in here. I'm going to put hash defined. So hash defined is a call to the preprocessor. So what this does is create something for us and assigns a value which we can set as well. So this occurs before compilation stage. Okay. Save anyway, yeah. Well, who else was using it? nobody else should be using it so what you do is hash define so this means that we are defining something then you assign a name to what you're defining so i'm going to put frog underscore movement underscore amount then you put space and the value that you're assigning to this definition so i'm going to put 80 so what we've done is we're defining something this is the name of our definition, almost like the name of a variable. And this is the value that we're assigning to our definition or a variable, for example. This is constant. This can't be changed after or anywhere in your code. So you would have to actually go in here and modify this value, then recompile and then distribute your application. So frog movement amount, you don't put equals as you would with a variable, you just put a space and the next value after is what is assigned to it. You can assign to it pretty much anything, a boolean value, a float, a string, maybe <laughs> a namespace, it doesn't actually matter. So that's the really powerful thing about definitions. So now if we want to use this definition in our frog cpp we actually just need to include the definition file to be able to access the properties inside of it so hash include definition.hpp go to our frog.cpp file in here say doing minus 80 because this needs to be a minus value that's fine we just need to do frog underscore movement amount and that's it copy that paste it here put it here and remember, anywhere that's negative, put a negative in front of it, that's valid as well. So this is now negative 80, 80, negative 80, 80. So if I wanted to change the value of the movement amount for our frog, just go to definitions, set this to 120. It's now updated in all four locations. And if I want to test it and I want to, let's say, change this to 1200, it's a very big value, but I don't have to go into each individual place that it's used to change it. So if I set this back to 80, 
And again, you, this doesn't actually matter whether you're using it in one file next to each other or in separate files. As long as you include the definition, you can include use that definition anywhere you want. So let's abstract some more stuff out. So if I go to the frog CPP, we're gonna abstract out the initial size. So in our definition, we're gonna put hash define frog underscore size underscore width and this will be 18 and we'll do a size for the height as well this is also 80 if i go to the cpp replace this with frog underscore size underscore width place this with frog underscore size underscore height so now we have definitions for it so if we wanted to update the size we just go here and we just update them. So this is a great way of just keeping track of stuff that's modifiable by the developer so we can just easily test stuff out. Instead of having to go to different code files, we can just change this, we can change that, let's run it, see how it looks. Okay, we need to tweak some values, just come back to this one file, change a few more things, have a look, look fantastic, great. We can just continue instead of just trailing around different places and updating several different values. So now let's go to our truck. There's quite a bit that we can abstract here. We can abstract the set size. We've already done that for the frog. So what I'm gonna do is leave that as an extra task for you because the process is essentially the same. What we're gonna do is abstract out the X movement. So go to definitions. I'm gonna put hash define truck underscore movement underscore speed and remember it's 0.2 and before we can use it we need to go into our file and do hash include definitions now in the cpp file replace this with truck underscore movement speed i haven't abstracted out the y value because we don't use a y value but you might so as an extra task abstract that out as well and even if it's 0.0 or just like a value that doesn't really matter at the moment, it's still good to abstract stuff out because you might want to change it later. If you do abstract that out, you could name this something like underscore X and update this in the definition file as well, and underscore Y for the Y movement speed. So now let's go to our game. There are a few things that we could abstract out of here. Let's abstract out the size of our window. So let's go to definitions. Put hash define window underscore width and this is in the 640 window underscore height this is going to be 480 and now in our game we need to do the same thing as before so hash include definitions now go to our game cpp instead of 640 we're gonna have window dot width and then window dot I mean window underscore height now let's also abstract at this the title of the game so let's just cut this into our definitions and put hash define not that hash define window underscore title Remember, I said you can assign pretty much anything to a definition. So I paste this here. That's all you got to do. You just assign the string. Even though there's a space here, this space is actually within the string. So it's actually reading it like this. So now in our game CPP, we just put, let's say, awesome, uh, not, not awesome, it's window underscore title. And now let's run it, make sure it's working. And let's see what we get. So we got awesome game, we can still move it. The truck is still moving, is still, I mean, moving at the same speed. So now let's go to definition and change a couple of things. I wanna make the truck go faster. Set it to 0 0.5, so it's two and a half times the speed. I want the frog to move more. I want it to move 160. Now, so let's run it, see what we get. As you can see, the truck is moving a lot faster. We are now moving a lot more. So it's easy to just modify values like so. So I'm just gonna undo this because the previous values 
were a lot better. So that's it for removing magic numbers and hard coded values. I haven't removed everything because I want you to do that as an extra task. One of the things that you could do is the set size, like I mentioned towards the start of the video. So abstract this out, have a look at what else you think you could abstract out as well and do that accordingly. And that's it really, just sort of just help make your code a lot cleaner, a lot neater, and it will just be a lot easier to maintain in the future. So that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on our educational platform, sonarlearning.co.uk. There'll be a link in the description to that, plus a link to the GitHub page, which has all the source code from this series. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and leave us a comment. And as usual, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.